Hi again guys, and so we've got another car to unbox. It's been a little while since I did the last one of course, and this time of year obviously isn't the best for getting things delivered, so I think this one's a little bit late, possibly, but if so, not by much. I have an idea of which one this is, because I've actually ordered a couple. I love finding cars that I really want at much, much lower prices, which you can usually get on a bid rather than a buyout. And with a couple of the cars that I've ordered, I got them so much cheaper than all of the other versions on eBay were. And that's why if you are a model car fan, you should definitely ch uh, check on eBay quite a lot. And also I'd recommend waiting until relatively late to actually bid on stuff. So, as I said, I think I have a good idea of which one this is. <clears throat> but there's only one way, of course, to find out. This one was a lot cheaper than uh, many of the other ones on there. You might have got a quick glimpse of it then. But this one, which is in mint condition, is a certain, as you can see from the box, Lamar winner. And these ones on eBay, they vary quite a bit as far as pricing goes. Um, <coughs> the box is pretty messed up anyway, which it said in the description that it was, so I don't really care about taking it out in a way that uh, keeps it fresh. Oh, interesting uh, interesting styrofoam, very similar style to uh, what the Aspas came in. I kind of like these, uh, these styrofoam styles. So, the moment of truth. It always surprises me when people sell model cars and then don't even bother to wipe them. <laughs> like there's still dust on the car. It's like, really? Really? Does it take that much effort? But this car is indeed the BMW. V12 LMR. In real life, this isn't one of my absolute favourite um, models, or, or not models, one of my absolute favourite Le Mans cars, but uh, I have a lot of respect for the car. It won the Le Mans in 1999. It's got a very big engine for a Le Mans car, a 6 litre V12, naturally aspirated. Uh, I think around 580 horsepower in real life. So, Pretty impressive. I believe it is an LMP900, one of the early LMP900s, ran against stuff like the Audi R8R and the R8C, I think. I can't recall, but I think there was a Toyota GT1 in that race as well. That might have been the race where they almost won. I'm not sure if that was 99 or 98, though. But yeah, it's got quite nice detail on it. The steering does work. A little bit, in conjunction with the wheel, if you can see that a little bit. Obviously on a Lamar car the steering isn't going to turn that much. But yeah, looks pretty nice. Try and get some close-up stuff of it. Of the detail. Needs a little bit of a dust off. But obviously I can do that in my own time. But yeah, I, I like the simplicity of the, of the V12 LMR's design. First introduced in Gran Turismo on GT4, of course. As far as Forza goes... When was this introduced? I mean, this was as far back as Forza 2. And I've never played the first game, so I'm not sure if it was on there or not. As I said, the V12 LMR isn't one of my absolute favourite Le Mans cars. But as far as models go, I do think it's uh, it's quite the eye-catcher. Plus, it goes quite... Oh, smashing everything. It goes quite nicely with my <coughs> existing one here. Which I have pulled out before in another video. The uh, Audi R8R. I was actually trying to pick up an Audi R8C as well, which is my favourite of all of the R8s. It's the closed top version, and it's got a big swooping round front end and a huge canopy on top, kind of like a Bentley Speed 8, which of course was based on the R8 platform. But yeah, very similar size, as you'd assume. Very similar. Same regulations, so obviously. 
but yeah, pretty nice. They're both relatively simplistic as far as design goes, but uh, I think, yeah, I'd say the Beamer is probably the prettier car of the two. But Audi Le Mans cars I don't think have ever really been pretty. They're not even trying to be, they're just trying to be competitive. And of course they are. But yeah, I've always liked the design of this one, like the livery. The design as well, but also the livery, it's so simple. There's also a black version, which I think looks absolutely fantastic, but of course this is the iconic one, the Dell livery. It needs a dust off, as I said, but I don't really care about the box. I'll keep the box, but I, I don't care about the box. And it's going to look pretty nice in the set. I don't know exactly where I'm going to put it, because I've got a shelf now which I put up to uh, put not quite half of the cars on, but the ones that I prefer, and then I've got these ones over here. So yeah, I've got another another two now that I'm waiting for. One is a supercar, which hasn't been posted yet. And the, <clears throat> and the other is the one that I thought this was, which is actually another Formula One car. I don't buy many Formula One cars. I've got the Jaguar R1, of course, which I did a video for. But uh, yeah, it's it's my favourite F1 car of all time. And that's that's a pretty good clue for people who know F1 cars and what kind of F1 cars I like. But there are two which you might be torn between. And I do love both of them. And uh, this is one of them. And I got it for an amazing price compared to what they usually go for. Same scale as well, which is nice. Because a lot of the cars that I love, and I think I've mentioned this before, they only come in 143 scale. And that's not bad, but that's just not what I'm into. I love this kind of bigger, more substantial, weighted, chunky kind of models where you can really get in there and look at the detail. And you don't have to like get out a magnifying glass and be like, oh, what's this? <laughs> You can just look at the car and appreciate it. And, you know, each to their own. Some people like 1.8 scale, which are like these massive ones. But, but yeah, pretty happy with it. And, uh, yeah, that's about it. So, I'll see you guys next time. And, as always, thanks for watching.